everybody and welcome back well I don't have much to say now because this is only a few minutes actually after I said goodbye in the last video because as I mentioned there I had plenty of video for that week so I'm gonna press on now and do the gearbox so as I haven't seen any comments or anything like that we'll get straight to it I've got everything sorted out and clean so we've got our gear cluster there's the piece you saw me working on to put the new bush in. Uh, there's the bits for the gear change and everything we need for the kickstart. A couple of plugs and things that have got to go in. I've got their new fibre washers on. Little gasket for the oil line. Everything like that. Oil seal for the back of the chain case. So first thing we're going to do actually is this. So I tell you what, I'll bring you closer in so you can see. So this first job is a little bit of machining and welding because the shaft that the gear change pedal goes on, the splines are virtually non-existent. And I still have, I'll have to order some more now, one of these repair things. Now normally, if you've seen me repair these before, the ones I've had have always been shorter. So I've actually had to cut this shaft and weld this one on. But this one, as you can see, whoops, goes right back to here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this one off there. We're going to drill into there so we can fit this in. Then we'll weld it up. And I'm thinking what I might do as well actually is drill it and put a little pin in. So let's go saw this off, put this in the lathe and drill a hole. First thing we're going to put on are the oil lines. That oh, heat has just come on. So with these, because see if you're doing a B25 or whatever, the takeoff for the for the rockers is down here. So you know that this is the return, the outside one. But here the takeoff is up at the tank, so you've got to remember the pipes cross. So let's uh, put that on there. Now this just goes onto one bolt, or one stud I should say. on the bottom here there's actually a little lip on the bottom of the engine and these two things put up against that so it can't turn and uh, get away from the oil holes all right so that's that now the next thing we're going to put on is the gearbox drain you'll notice it's got two hexes this small one on the outside here opens up this so when that's in there if you take the small one out any excess oil just goes out till it gets to that level so it's a leveling uh, plug actually and then there's the main one so that goes in near the back there size for that. That must have been a bigger one. Alright, let me uh, 
get the right size socket for that. That is in, I've moved you around so you can see. See, so there's, see how small an amount of oil actually goes in a gearbox. It's just enough actually to catch the, uh, the lay shaft here and that throws the oil around everywhere and that lubricates things. Okay, next thing. Now we'll put in the oil pressure relief valve, which is this little doodad here. And you see it's got a ball and a spring, that fits into there. And there's the pressure from the feed into the crankshaft. So if it becomes bunged up or gets too high, this is always full of oil under the same pressure as the pressure in the crank. So if it gets too high, it pushes this ball off its seat in here and it comes back into the sump. That just goes in there like thus. I can't find the, <laughs> the right uh, socket. All the sockets are there except the one I want. So I'll put this in and tighten it up with a spanner. There we go. Okay, now we can look at the gearbox. Let's see if I can remember how this goes back together because you know the B25 one uh, sort of all goes together and goes in as one. This, this doesn't so I've already put some oil in these. But we'll some oil into that bearing, some into that bush. So the first thing to go in is our I think it's first gear. Let's go in there. Like that. Make sure it's all the way in. Seems to be. Now then. So now we want the main shaft to go in there, the lay shaft to go in there and there's a hole at the back for the shaft that the uh, gear shift runs on. So that's got to go in there. Actually I think I can put those in separately so we can't get them out now. Uh, there we go. Keep the right way around. Okay so that goes in there, that goes in there, goes in there like that. And these go Bent. Oh. Take these out and keep them the right way around. Oh, will you look at that? Let me see if that rod is the same size as the B25 one. We might have to come to a standstill here for me to order one of those. I don't know. It's actually got a kink in it, so I don't even know if it'll straighten. I'll go and look what I've got, and I'll uh, then I'll see if I can straighten that. If not, I had a comment that mentioned I keep going off and getting things, and this is where I go to my little boxes like this. See, B25 gearbox and clutch. Oh, oh, oh. There's the very 
item. Same length, same size. Right, I'm gonna put that one in there. We're in business. Right, well, I've just, to be on the safe side, rolled this on the surface plate and it's perfectly straight. So that one goes up in there. That one goes in there. Goes in there. In there, all the way through. Into a hole in the back. All right. What's the next thing? Well, the next thing is to put this plate in. But, unlike the nice B25, keeps it saying about this, but they've obviously thought things through. All this is built up on the plate. Here, we've got to put this in, and then when we've got the outer cover on, we put that in. So this has got to go against the spring, That's going to be a bugger, isn't it? Right, well, let's... Uh... Oh, hang on, we have the thing to put in there yet, don't we? Uh... Oh, in fact... That's going to go in there to hold it with the spring and everything. But I haven't done the repair yet, so let's do the repair next. So, a couple of measurements to start with. Actually, I must have already measured this because I've got it written down there. So, at present, it sticks out two and a quarter inches. And this thing is... Oh, two and... It's going to be on the 16th. I could have just guessed that, but... 2 and 11 sixteenths so that's 2 and 11 sixteenths you're right all those people who mentioned metric and that this would be a lot easier that's uh, a quarter is 4 sixteenths so we're going to stick it in we're going to drill 7 sixteenths and for the drill Well, that's 495 and a half thou. So we want to drill. Uh, see if I can find one just under the half inch. If need be, what I'll do is turn seven sixths of this just slightly smaller to match a smaller drill and then put it in. And that way it'll press in nice and tight and I can just put some weld round. Slight change of plan. I'm going to grip this end in the chuck on the lathe, but because it's small, I'm worried that it's not going to be gripped and be straight when I drill this hole. So what I'm going to do is instead of cutting it off right back here, I'm going to cut it off just here. So I've got enough room to put a dial indicator on. And then when I chuck it up, I can make sure it's absolutely straight when I drill that hole and then what I can do is as I say I'm going to drill the hole slightly smaller so I'll drill it in and I know I'm going to come out here about an eighth of an inch so instead of seven sixteenths that's another eighth of an inch that we'll turn it down to all right so you know what we're doing so there's stage one done cut it and drilled it. So now I've got to turn this down for 9 sixteenths to be a good tight fit in there and then we'll put a little chamfer on both edges, weld it in and it will be a good strong repair. Now stage two, 
put this back, put our little chamfer on. So that should be a good tight fit in there. And there we are. Uh, what was it? Stick out was two and a quarter inches from there. Two and a quarter inches. Spot on. So all I've got to do now is weld that and we're done. And now weld it up. So I'll pop it in the lathe and we'll just ease that down. The last thing I'm going to do, although it probably doesn't need it, is I'm going to drill through there and put an eighth inch pin in. And I've drilled the hole through here and this time I just used an eighth inch drill. You remember when I did the sprocket I drilled it and reamed it. Well, that was because I was putting very exact pins in. This time I'm using an eighth inch roll pin so it's actually large and then it closes up. And of course it is a bit long. Actually I've gone off camera there. But There you go, so it's out this side, I'll just cut that bit off and that job, as apparently they say in Wales, is jobbed. Hey everybody and welcome back. Well if that confused you, it's because you're watching one video but I haven't been in the workshop since that last bit of video you watched for several days because it's been Christmas, as can be seen by the uh, old Sunday best hat replacing the work hat. All right, um, I'm not gonna take up too much of your time. I just wanna tell you a couple of things that have happened in the interim. First of all, let me say a big thank you to all the people who took the trouble to look for a pair of badges for me. Um, can't remember all your names. I got comments and I even got emails about it. Uh, the most annoying one, in a way, was from Leah. You may remember Leah from um, the uh, Nordaha. I got some very good information about the battery box and the battery carrier and stuff. So anyway, what did she say? Um, what did she say? Oh yes, she noticed that they were in the Waldridges, who are in Canada, Christmas sale. And that was annoying because Waldridge is one of my suppliers and he actually sent me a flyer with all the stuff in the Christmas sale and I didn't look at it. So anyway, thank you all the people who took the trouble to look for that and thank you particularly to Rob who runs, uh, what are they called, Classic Restorations. Because Rob actually wrote to me and said, and sent me pictures, he had some. And if they were the right ones, he would donate them to the project. So. They were the right ones. They're gorgeous, aren't they? Much better than the black ones. So anyway, really, thank you very much, Rob. That was very generous of you. Okay, so we're gonna get on. Um, what else do I wanna mention? Oh yeah, tappets, camp followers, whatever you wanna call them. A couple of people mentioned, include Charlie Prescott, that I put them in the wrong way around with those little oil holes, if that's what they are, to the front, and they should go to the back. Um, so I've changed them around. And the other comment was about the clamp for the distributor, because I put that in the wrong way around, but really I just popped that in to show you where it went. And because the screw for that goes right through the inner and outer cover, you can only put it in one way or the, you won't be able to get the screw into it. So um, first thing I'm gonna show you is another little problem that I've just found as I've started working, and that's to do with the kickstart. So let's start with that. So here are the components of the kickstart. Uh, I've got to try and do this without getting my hands in the way. So there's the kickstart shaft. Kickstart goes at this end. There's the bit that sort of goes in the case. And here's the ratchet mechanism. Now this spring goes in that hole and then that little plunger to hold the ratchet up. And what happens is this other piece goes in there. And as it goes one way, 
the piece is held up by the spring and it catches on the inside of what is it fourth gear so it turns the gearbox turns the engine kickstart works then when it comes back it just gets pressed down and clears all the teeth as it comes back over well what I found out was I don't know if I can show you this where are we one side was completely worn away so I built it up with weld reshaped it all and put it in and it was still it was just so sloppy in here that it wasn't I, I really don't know how it worked at all before I took it apart because you remember I kicked the engine over I even checked the compression with it so I built this up here and started to reshape it but even so once I put this in it just flops about in there this is so worn in here so I checked with Peter Quick at British unit singles and he had kickstart shaft the ratchet the whole ratchet mechanism everything so it's a hundred and something dollars I wasn't planning to spend but I thought what the hell because I mean this end is is worn and what have you as well so anyway I've ordered a new one of them I got him to send it to UPS so hopefully it'll be here for the end of the week but in the meantime let's go and put the uh, last part of the gear change together so the first thing we've got to do is put the uh, return spring back on this and I always figure out how to do it so I always have to look it up in the BSA manual but you put it on and as you push it in you're supposed to twist it that way so let's see if I can do it and keep it in camera and there we go right so that's on there like that then we have that that goes in there or should I say that that goes in where is it oh no it's a yes that's a no I was going to say uh, too much Christmas cheer I haven't got a bottle of Glenfiddich at the moment but I do have a bottle of ginger wine and uh, a great big bottle of sort of Bailey's type stuff so we've got to put this in and then that goes into those little things and onto there so let me see if I can do that let me move you around a little bit more my hands might get in the way there so here it goes now there's that little sprung plate at the back there which you can't see but that goes into these here to keep some tension on it so we put that in so we've got the rollers in the slots and that goes in that's just a nut falling off don't worry about it Actually, I'm not sure if this is going to stay in place without us putting the cover on. Anyway, let me get the nut. I've made myself self conscious now about getting my hands in the way. <laughs> I know that last video, it was particularly bad okay let me get a socket for that and uh, so I can tighten it up and then hopefully this will all just stay together while we uh, wait for these other bits to come there I've tightened the nut up at the bottom you'll notice actually I, sh I forgot to show you it but when you look at the nut from the the other side not the hex side it's actually eccentrically drilled why I don't know but anyway there it is in so that'll hold that together until we get the bits to put the kickstart in and then we can put the outer cover on and I have actually got some new allen head bolts to do the covers so they should have arrived by then and we'll put the distributor in as well because we can put the clamp in and all that alright let's go and have a look at the clutch side then I've already put 
the oil seal in there. There's nothing special, just a piece of tube in the right size. Tap it in. So I've also put a bit of oil on it and I've oiled the sprocket. That goes on. lines like that into the oil seal big lock washer come on now in the right oil in the right lock washer I tell you I'm thinking of starting to do it on Japanese bikes because I get sick and tired of parts that don't fit. Let me go and file a couple of little bits off these. All right, I'm back. Put a little bit of a, they were more or less straight across instead of following the curve. But there you go, look. Right. Now then, what did I do with my... I think we go around that way. No, we're going to go around that way, so it wants to go in. so it will jam up better. I had a couple of people tell me what this was called. What was it? A chain whip? Something like that. There's my hand in the way again, wasn't it? Alright, that's that there. Inch and a half socket. Bend the tab over a little bit and we can put this cover on. Just struck me that before I put this cover on I might as well put the chain on and then it's easier to deal with. I even remembered to put some gloves on because normally I get clarted up to the eyeballs with the, uh, the grease they put on these. stand or anything, I can't turn the back wheel, but and I can just lift the chain and move it. I love that one. Getting so thoughtful thinking about the chain that I forgot to do that lock washer. Last the garage is warmed up. Okay, so that's in there. Let me do that lock washer. 
I've actually made it harder for myself. Well, I can move that over a bit. Let me do that. So, done the lock washer, put the little uh, felt washer on there. I have put the oil seal in here. So let me oil the lip of the oil seal. New gasket, all greased up. Ah, the C15 one doesn't have the little nib on it. Okay, and the grease for the for the gasket has greased the threaded holes where the little screws go in. So, put these in. If you heard that rumbling, it's when the wind comes at a certain direction to the metal roof, it makes it rattle. Which if you knew how many screws had gone into that, these long screws is like little rubber washers under the heads, so they seal. You know, these screwdrivers I've got here, they have rubber handles and as soon as they got some petrol and solvent on it went soft and sticky and they're actually pretty horrible. I keep meaning to buy some more to replace these sizes. All right, you don't want to watch me screwing screws in. So there's that screwed up tight. Now we can put this oil seal in here. There's the little spacer that goes on so we'll put the oil seal in and then we put the sprocket on primary chain and the clutch then we can do the electronic ignition unit finish our wiring up all right we're going to go back over to the timing side to get this gearbox finished because the new one of those has arrived well, let me turn these round. I don't know whether you'll be able to see this. You see how worn the shape of that is, you know, really, whereas that is, it's actually a quarter inch. That's perfect. And the same with these parts, that was really worn. So I've got new ones. Let me put this together and then we'll finish off this gearbox. So the first thing we'll put in is the distributor. I'll do this first so that I don't forget to put this in. It's the sort of little thing you do forget and then you get it all put together and you suddenly realise you haven't done this. Because you're thinking, oh, I'll put the distributor in last and you forget to put that in. So, as I mentioned, it'll only go in one way because when you look at the case, you'll see the hole for it is near this mounting hole here. And also, it's threaded on one side. So that when you put the screw in and tighten it up, it cramps it. So that goes in there like that. I've put a screwdriver in to find out roughly where the tank should be. Which is right there. Okay. So we'll uh, tap that down with a little rubber mallet. There. I've actually taken the gubbins out because you never know when somebody might need them and I don't. I would have thought that would have gone down further than that. I wonder if there should be an o-ring around that. 
Anyway, I can always pull that back out later on if need be. It was just making sure I got that in there. Okay, next thing is our nice new kickstart piece, which goes in there. Okay, so let me put a bit of uh, gasket cement on this cover. See, there's what I was saying, there's the small hole for that. So put some gasket cement on and then we'll put this together. Okay, just put a bit of oil on everything. Started. What was on with the cover? Oh, hang on. So, oh, I think I put some on there, didn't I? Because there was a bush. Okay, where are we? Hang on. Bit of red time here, isn't it? So that goes on there. That goes in there. And I'll get my chair on there. change mechanism sticking a bit all right so not gone all the way on what are you catching on Oh, I know what it is. It's the uh, the thing here has got a spring on the back, isn't it? So let's put this in. That goes to the top. No, that's not the spring. What's stopping that? What's stopping that? Oh, it's catching on something. It's all right at the front. Catching on something here. Thinking if I can get this is when it always annoys me because you put your gasket cement on. Fortunately, this stuff, as I say, is non hardening. Spot on that, the hole to the top. Ah. 
Oh dear. I knew I shouldn't have come out to finish this off today. Hang on, let me switch you off while I have a look round here. Alright, I found out what it was. It's the little stop thing for the kickstart. I didn't have the kickstart round, so it was actually pressing up against the stop instead of being in the cutout. Alright, so let's put a few screws in. That's not that one. Not that one either. Where do all these short ones go? Alright, one of them goes in there. Let's see which all right, we just had the battery go flat again without me noticing. So I put my screws in and I've also put this pin in, but I haven't put the split pin in yet. And I've just put that on there. And uh, it lists a lock washer. What is that for? Something to do with the organ of that bush? But anyway, I can't see where that lock washer is supposed to go. So, I'll tighten that up in a minute. Um, what was I saying about this pin? I was talking away to you and you weren't there to hear me. Right. What I was saying was this pin will have to be curved to go in providing the hole has stayed lined up of course seems to be pointing away from me a bit there half of it going in so what I need I need bending the other way so the longer part they really did need to do some redesigning on this engine didn't they I've never owned a C15 I wanted an SS80 at one time. There was one in Matt Newton's for my couple of viewers who are from Middlesbrough. But I never did buy it because my dad wouldn't sign the HP. He was very much, if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. Might have to shorten this to start with. I've got loads of these. That might be too big a... Hang on. Right, I've got the next size down. Well, it's gone in the hole. Yep, oh good. I was just going to say that. Those two holes can't be aligned. They are. Right, 
Right. Now there is of course a cover which goes on there but the new bolts haven't arrived. I brought it over. There it is. So that's going to go on there like so. I've got some little, these two be here. Tap these holes out. I've got some nice new little Allen's coming for that. So the next thing that goes on is that. It's causing a little groove. There we go. Now then. We've got two flats on the shaft. And there's the flats for that. But this is one of those where you've got to have it. I hate these. Where you've got to tension the spring first. Ooh, did we get it? Generally what happens is the very first coil tightens up and won't go over the boss. Uh, when you're trying to get it over the boss, the rest of it springs off. That'll probably go pioing and shoot off when I'm not looking. Right, let me show you why we're not putting the outer cover on. So here is the outer cover for the original C15s with a distributor. So there's nothing there for the points cover. The other thing there isn't is there's no oil seal on the kickstart shaft. And I can't remember whether it was a comment or an email, but one chap who watches who has a C15T was asking me about this because he can't stop it leaking oil out of there. And when you look at the gearbox, the gearbox level is actually about halfway up the kickstart shaft. So I'm wondering what to do. I was thinking I might put an oil seal in, but a 5 8 oil seal is an inch. No, I don't know what I mean. Where is it? Where's my little ruler gone? Don't know. Oh, there's one. So, this boss is only an inch and a quarter. And there's no, the back of this basically goes up against that plate that has the kickstart spring on. So I can't put anything on the back because what I was thinking was, this is a 5 8 by 1 inch oil seal is a quarter of an inch thick and that isn't quite a quarter of an inch so I was wondering if I could put an extra piece on here or on the outside I don't think I can just to, to bulk this up because the kickstart and everything is pretty close to each other so then I thought maybe I would put inside here I'll machine an o-ring groove put an o-ring in there for the 5 8 shaft that's not the one I don't think that's the one all right so I've been ordering some stuff so I've ordered an oil seal just to see what it all looks like and if the oil seal is going to be too much out of that then I'll go with an o-ring but I want to do something it seems so stupid just to have that like that all right so that's what we've got done and that is as much as we can do this week let me swing you around so you can see the bike so it's starting to look something like isn't it actually it has a certain novelty value I'm glad I decided to leave that on and with the nice little uh, chrome push on too so we'll get these last couple of little bits done here Now that's got a little bit filed out there. 
what's that for? Oh, I'll show you something as well that I think is another stupid idea. As you know, the C15 basically is the cub design. That's why it's a bit flimsy. You stood the cylinder up and things like that. And this actually looks really like a cub cover. But the thing that a cub cover has, because this has the same type of um, clutch push rod, it's not the mechanical worm drive thing on the top, like the B, the, put on the B25. Actually, I think it was on the later ones of these as well, when they went to the points, the F and G ones or whatever. But the cup had a hole there, a little plastic cap that went in it, to be able to get this to put the clutch cable on. But this one doesn't have it. So you're going to have to take this off to put the cable onto this little thing here. And also, there's not much room at the back. The cable goes out at a terrible angle. Anyway, there are things for us to uh, look to in the future. But that's where those two small ones go. Look. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's put them in there. I mean, I don't need to because I'm only going to take them back out. But we'll get it all screwed up properly, and then when the nice little Allen head ones come, I think I've even mentioned to you in the past not to forget these two under here. Because you see this and you think that's the line of the case, but it's not. There we go. And when I put the proper Allen ones in, I'll put some grease on the threads. Alright, there we go. Okay, so that's where we are for this week. So you stay safe and enjoy yourselves.